Hello and welcome to Royal Mystic Collective Wisdom. This is our beautiful energy of understanding and I'm sharing some of the things I've learned as I have been on my mystic journey, learning new spiritual understandings and getting wonderful new insights to why things are the way they are and how they work. And this beautiful conversation is just about to be uh, an amazing eye-opening experience regarding chakras. So usually you get a very basic understanding of chakras. There are seven of them. They all have different colors and they all are sort of, uh, they, they deal with the meridians. As far as acupuncture would see them, they're about the uh, parasympathetic nervous system. So allowing yourself to understand that your central flow of energy starts at the base chakra, which is the root chakra, that's where your where your pelvis is and where you actually would sit on the earth. And it can be transferred into your feet because it does have the ability to do that because that's sometimes where we connect to the earth. If if you're standing, then it would put you in that position. So let's go starting with this beautiful uh, root chakra, the basis of the whole thing. It's a brilliant red. It deals with the energy of survival. It's your basic um, instinct, the fight or flight, the energy of being uh, safe and secure is the opposite of it. So what we want to be in alignment is, is feeling safe and stable. So it's located at the base of your spine where your hips are, and it controls issues such as money and food. So if you're having a crisis regarding either of those issues, there's a whole plethora of behavior that can go with that and also feelings that can go with that. So um, if you're having to realign that, you can also do it with things that are connected. So the crystal is carnelian. That's the most common one used for that. It is a very solid grounding energy. It is an earth element, and it's there are dates of activation on these. I didn't know any of this stuff when I when I first uh, started to check this out. So between one and seven years old is when this chakra becomes active in our bodies. And as we are open, we are able to deal with issues that come up fairly confidently and able to be very grounded throughout the whole ordeal. But if it's blocked, we become fearful and we start to lose our feeling of security. We feel threatened and unstable. So if you're feeling that way, you can now identify that that root chakra needs to be tweaked. So you either need to sit and have a meditation session where you're just concentrating on aligning that that root chakra. And all you have to do is focus your energy on the root chakra, which is basically a big red ball of light uh, within your pelvis area. Just think of it floating in there. Understanding that you can also eat foods that help to realign it. So anything red, tomatoes, um, beets pomegranates, cherries, any cranberries, right? All of these things. Also, understand that if you want to ground yourself, the root chakra, you would eat food that grows in the earth. So carrots and potatoes and things like that. They don't have to be red, but they root chakra requires root vegetable if you want to realign it with food. I didn't know that either. I didn't know that was even possible. So this is why I'm sharing this. Understand that um, your root chakra is really the foundation of all the things that you do from that point on. So it's the most important to start with. And then we move up into the sacral chakra, which is the creative center. And it is also where, uh, in a woman, there would be a uterus. So that's where the seed of life is, right? That's where we give birth. So that's where we grow the baby. So it connects to all of that. It connects to your creative abilities, your emotions, and the energy you feel and, you know, the power you feel uh, in regards to your own body, right? It's located in the lower abdomen, about two inches below the navel. 
it creates or controls your sense of abundance and well-being, your pleasure and your sexuality. So understanding that if you feel vulnerable in any of these areas, uh, that creative source energy can be assisted through your a mantra as simple as I allow my creativity to flow freely. It is orange, and that means all foods that are orange would help to align it. It is the water element because it is emotion. And I would recommend a sunstone as the as the stone for it, but you can also use tangerine quartz and fire agate, anything orange, um, or pimint is another one. Uh, it looks like an orange slice. <laughs> And this particular chakra is activated between 8 and 14 years old. Then we go into the solar plexus chakra, which is right below where your stomach is, where your ribs make the V. And it's formerly known as the bread basket for for us that grew up in, in a certain time period. So this particular chakra is the energy of of being very much in willpower and able to withstand and stay focused on a goal. And if it's blocked, you might feel the overwhelming amounts of shame and guilt, self-doubt, and um, being just in a very negative energy. If you have your sacral chakra open, you're free to express your true self and you feel self-esteem and very confident and self-worth. You're very empowered through this energy. So also it is yellow. So know that the stone that I choose for it is citrine. It is all about your connection to vitality and being able to overcome all challenges and, and just knowing that where there's a will, there's a way. This, this out of all the chakras is most connected to your ego. But this is where ego is useful. Because ego can make you push past your own mental boundaries, right? So understand that, that, that you can overcome all of these, anything that's blocked can be overcome, but you got to know why you, you know, which one is blocking you and why you need to unblock it. So this particular energy is very much about connecting to um, the, when I talk about relentless optimism, that's where I feel like it ad- identifies right there in that solar plexus chakra when I'm relentlessly optimistic. And it, it requires you to go in each day, clear the slate, start again, no matter what. You don't, there's no victory can be saved. You have to start again, right? So that, that is where the tenaciousness comes in. Now we're going to go to the heart chakra, which of course deals with love it is all about being in a place of your ability to give and receive love. Someone with a blocked heart chakra might have difficulty allowing yourself to feel worthy of love or deserving or even the ability to give someone else uh, your deepest compassion and empathy, okay? If it's blocked, you're in a place of feeling lost or outcast you can feel an immense amount of grief and and the negativity that comes with that is very much about self doubt and and things that you don't know, you don't feel like you're good enough or worthy enough so it is in the center of your chest and it controls love joy and inner peace And the mantra that I love the best for this heart chakra to heal it is, I am perfect exactly as I am. Of course, it is the color green, and its element is air. A good crystal, the two I I really love are malachite and uh, emerald. These are energies of very strong heart chakra connections. You can also use aventurine and... um, Fluorite, the very good green colors, solidly connected to the heart chakra. This activates between 21 and 28 years old. So we're not talking about puppy love here. We're talking about a different kind of love that's more inclusive, where you are in a place where it's mature love and not 
the you know flights of fancy that we have when we're younger. Now we're going to go to the throat chakra. This one gives a bunch of people a bunch of problems. So being able to speak your truth without fear is a big deal. This is where your personal power is connected and your ability to allow your heart to speak. This is the throat chakra gives voice to that heart chakra. It also allows you to express yourself without um without monitoring or without editing, without self-editing to actually be in a place where you speak. Now, if this particular one is blocked, it is blocked with lies and fear and shame. You'll feel a knot in your throat. Usually this is uh, having to do with having a secret that you don't want somebody to find out about or that something you were told was bad about you uh, or that you did that, you know, you can never speak on this. Don't ever say, don't ever tell anyone. So, and when you're having, someone's telling you, I need to tell you something, but you can't tell anyone. Just tell them, no, thank you. Unless it's somebody that you really need to help because holding that stuff blocks your own energy. So it's located right in your throat. It's about communication, self-expression and truth. And the mantra I like for this particular chakra is, I speak my truth without fear. It's light blue, a turquoisey color, and it's connected to sound and music, of course. This is where we sing and we speak and all of the beautiful energy. The crystal for this is aquamarine, but you can also use lace agate. It's a light blue color, also um, blue calcite and... um, I forget the name of it. I'll if I if I can think of it during the before we before we hang up, I'll try to remember the name of a specific. Oh, it went right through my. It jumped in and jumped right back out. So we're just going to pass on that. Um, just Google crystals for for throat chakra, and you'll be able to find whatever you may already have one for it. So now we're going to move up to the. Third eye chakra, from your throat to the third eye. And we're talking about the pineal gland and the center of your forehead. So the third eye chakra controls our ability to see the bigger picture and our intuition. It registers information beyond the surface. It is visual, audible, and information downloads that are common when your third eye is open, understand that when you're in a place of flow or like you're writing or you're in a place of creative um, energy where you're painting or doing something tactile, this is the visioning place. This is where the sight comes from within you rather than from your external eyes. And it is the connection to sacred source. So the mantra for this one is I receive communication from divine. The color can be dark blue or purple, and the element is light. So it is about the light transmission. The crystal best for this one is amethyst. Hands down, amethyst is the best one. But uh, if you have like um, sujolite, that's a purple stone, or the super seven stones, they have amethyst in them, but they're also very purple. So those are some other suggestions. And this one, check this out, guys. This one doesn't activate until you're 36 to 42 years old. How about that? Now, I can't explain why mine was active when I was young. Um, Maybe I'm just more acute with it. But, um, yeah, I've, I've always been able to see things. Now, I haven't been able to control that until I got into tarot and uh, really started to go, you know, understand my abilities. So just know that it's this isn't a hard and fast rule i'm just giving you the general time periods when when that's believed to be activated fully so then we have the crown chakra and that's chakra number seven and it sits about six inches above the crown of your head and it's connected to source the all when you're fully open in your crown chakra you are able to use your intuition and guidance and, and know where it's coming from. And that's the other thing is when you know it's coming from source, you know. And uh, because, you know, being able to be clairaudient or clairvoyant or clairsentient, any of the psychic abilities, 
people are always skeptical and they kind of look at you, oh, okay, until you tell them something that nobody else could have possibly known. <laughs> then then, they, then they, their ears perk up and they pay attention like meerkats. So the understanding of this is when you have your connection of your crown chakra, I see it as a gateway, okay? And I feel like sometimes spirituality can get a bad rap because people don't understand um, what's happening to the person, you know, someone like me who's trying to connect for you and tell you what I can see. It is all about love and light. There's not a negative thing about it for me. There may be something for somebody else, but for me, this is my sacred journey, and I would never, ever soil it with uh, anything other than love and light. So my mantra for this one is, I am filled with love and light. And you can even say, I am filled with divine love and light. This is, you know, however, whatever you want, need to take it to. These are just suggestions that I came up with, so you can change it, just whatever suits you. The color of the crown chakra is violet or white or a combination of the two. This is a lot of times you hear me talk about the white light, pouring in the white light. It is not because I'm trying to distinguish a specific grade of light, okay? I'm trying to tell you it is the whitest of all white light. It's, it is literally blindingly white. So it's not about me trying to quantify that this light's better than another light. This is holy light, and there's no other light like it. And so when I'm doing the prayer, you hear me say divine white light because that's what I'm calling in. So this is a specific, if you've, you've, you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's, a, it's very different from other light. So it is the color of violet or white, and it talks, or the element is uh, divine consciousness. Now, the perfect crystal for this is selenite. The other perfect crystal for this is Herkimer Diamond. Now, it's a crystal from Herkimer County, New York, and there's a diamond mine or a crystal mine there. And they pull it up, and and they're tiny little pieces, but they work so well. So this activation is 43 to 49 years old. Isn't that something? Now, a lot of, a lot of different uh, beliefs um, talk about people not being fully ready for, you know, any kind of leadership or any sojourning as they move forward in the energy of, of their quest for spirituality. Uh, some people or some, some religions won't even let you touch the books or the texts until you're 50 years old. That's like the magic year that you become fully activated so, and that's, I believe that has something to do with the chakras and the understanding of the balancing of them. So remember, just like all the rest, if the food is leafy and green and, and it would match your heart chakra, if it's um, a blueberry, it would be your throat. Uh, anything purple, a plum or grapes, those would definitely be in the, in the third eye area. And anything that would be really in a in a beautiful blue energy, you you know any food you can find in that in that spectrum would would match that chakra to help heal it. So anything that goes up into the air energies, I would say anything that that is like um, something that grows on a tree, right, um, would definitely fit the bill. So that is your your quick version of the chakras and what they stand for. The reason I went to the trouble to talk about this is because it will hinge back. There'll be several times when I refer back to the, this episode because everything moving forward is so connected to these centers, especially if you're in a place of clearing and meditation, understand that what we talked about just now all of the issues that can can block those chakras can also cause physical attachment for things that we want to purge and clear. 
So if you're finding that you're having trouble getting rid of something and logically you know it's just a hunk of junk, you have to see where it ties to yourself in your body so that you can make peace with that and let it go. So that can also be used to help you in the purging and clearing, but the understanding must come first. So I hope this has been um, helpful and interesting. And I send you much love and light and let yourself be clear and free to move forward. Clean the slate and allow yourself to understand where in your body energy lives and how it attaches to you and blocks your energy if you don't pay attention to to what balances out your energy. So I hope this helps. And I send you all love, light, abundance, joy, happiness prosperity, fulfillment, and may you all find your journey that meets your path as you move forward, allowing you to see what you need to see, learn what you need to learn, and grow into your highest frequency, having a beautiful, beautiful experience along the way. Thank you for being with me on this journey. I appreciate your energy, and I love you all. I'll see you next time. Namaste. Namaste.